What's up, guys? <clears throat> oh, Lord. Coach Gabe with Kogi Volleyball Club. Here's another vlog. Um, just working on paying some bills right now while I do this. Um, basically, got back last night from Beast of the Southeast Tournament. <clears throat> Great tournament. I really love that tournament. There's so many competitive teams, so it makes it fun because that's what I fish for. I'm always fishing for competition. Um, I'm not fishing for free wins. I'm not fishing for tournaments and, and all this stuff. And, you know, if, if I can send a, a twos team to an easier tournament or something like that, or a younger team, yeah, cool. But when it comes to my wants teams and stuff like that, I'd rather the competition than just winning an, an easy tournament. Um, so we chose Beast of the Southeast, <clears throat> even though we had a local tournament um because of that like what's the point of me <clears throat> signing up our kids for a local tournament to go compete against the same girls they compete in school um the same girls they see every day and the competition is, is just not up to par to where what it should be so we signed them up for beast of the southeast um and that's the decision we, we followed through with the rest of the teams. We started with our 15s first, signed them up for open, and then I just decided to put every, a lot of the, the other teams in it. Um, and it was a great decision. Our 15s open, got to compete against A5, got our first win ever against an A5 top team, um, which said so putting that notch out there, you know? Uh, so it's a big thing for us. Um, I know A5 gets tons and tons of wins all the time uh, with the top teams, but for us, that's a first big win. So <clears throat> I'm going to take it and, and run with it. Um, and we were close to the other games. I mean, every open game that they played was very competitive. And that's that's a scenario with me. Um, any team that I've put that I'm the one coaching for the most part in open, they've all been competitive. But I am also more willing to put my team in it <clears throat> because if I do get beat, I don't expect the parents to start bickering or saying anything and I can defend whatever they say because it's my choice to put them in open because I want them to get better. Eventually they'll go back to school ball and be like, oh my God, this is so slow. This is, or they'll see what people consider a top player in Mississippi and they'll be like, I played against way better players the entire club season. Um, so that's kind of what we want. We want them to evolve. We want them to see that there's more to it than, than this area. There's more competition and it's just bigger everywhere. So I, I don't know if I'm willing to put, because I have once teams, but it's not the same as once teams on an A5 that has once teams or a TAV once teams or a Drive Nation once teams. It's not the same level. I mean, we don't, <clears throat> we don't have like a population of a million right here and, and stuff like that. So it's hard to find those those players and do that. Um, so we work with what we got, we train tough. And, you know, I, I've just realized and learned because last season I did that. I think I put all my ones in opens and a lot of the ones, not all of them, but a lot of the ones got smoked all weekend long. And like I said, mine has always competed and I think last season, one of them was also competitive, but we have to change that up. Um, but everything is, is a growing process in club and, and I've been growing and learning um, through everything that just because I have a once team doesn't mean I need to throw them in open if they are not at that level to compete in open. Or they can lose every game, but it, it has to at least be competitive so they can get better. If they're just getting smoked 25 to five, 25 to eight, I'm not even breaking double digits. Are they really getting better? So that's something that I got to consider when, when I do this. Um, for my 15s, it works. They're very competitive, and they proved it this weekend. And I'm happy for them because, you know, Fallon and Ivy and Mia, they've seen open. I mean, I think <laughs> they've seen open three years in a row. And um, I think the first year they play together at 13s, they play one tournament in open. It's the tournament – they hold the record for the biggest beatdown in Koki history, by the way. Fallon, Ivy, and Mia do. And they lost 25-1. <laughs> to 1. Um, I don't remember what the team was. I know that was Coach Sydney's first year, so she holds the record for that. We make fun of it all the time. 
um, but it's all a learning process. So for me this season, those three kids have already been through Open about three years competing with it, so they know what they to expect, what they're gonna see. Um, the whole other crew is brand new to it. They've never seen competition like that. They've never seen that, that speed, that, that ball control. They've never seen those kind of serves, that kind of hit, none of it. So for me, it was fun to give them that experience and including the parents. The parents had never seen anything like that. So I love when they get to see an experience and experience something like that and that competitive and they lived up to it. You know, they, they worked very hard, they did um as much as they could and and we were competitive all weekend and that's all i can ask um again um 16s won did their thing they just got to maintain a good attitude through everything else 14s won got same concept got to maintain a good attitude through everything else but again just we picked these tournaments like 16s 2 16 simpson all those people playing we picked these tournaments to find more competition and not to be playing against our friends 24 7. Um, the little ones that we might do locally, it's, as you can see, we don't take the top teams to those. Um, it's just learning. Again, it's just learning. But one of the things I've, um, <clears throat> I love about this platform and everything I've been able to do is, is being able to post good stuff and good plays from other people as well. Like we got a lot of good plays from other people that I'm probably going to be posting. I think I already posted one, um, one of the middle smoked us i mean that middle was smoking it pretty much all game but she got some nasty ones so i had to post it of course we got some blocks there's some more cup stuff coming up um that we're gonna use from from other teams that they did great at um i think that's one of the credits that we've gotten for is that we're willing to post other stuff even if it's a point on us and why wouldn't i i'm a, I'm a fan of volleyball in general like that's me i'm just a fan of good volleyball <clears throat> and that's all i can ask for so um I'm gonna keep doing that. And um, anybody, again, like I said, that took patience and stuff, just tag us in it. Um, I appreciate you, I'm very humbled by that. I really am. I think that people are trying, I've noticed that people are trying to get cloud and, and cloud chase and get me riled up to get cloud. And I'm just not gonna give it to them because I don't believe in that. I know people are trying to imitate what, what I do and, and stuff like that. And I don't think people realize the amount of work it takes. Um, I've been working nonstop this morning since I woke up till now on editing videos, doing all the stuff that I need to do. And I'm counting through like one entire match and that's it. Um, so it takes time, it's not easy. So, and I mean, for what we do and what I try to do that I came up with doing this and, and this idea was, <clears throat> I just invested the money in, in opening the gym up to the world. I mean, everybody wants to talk all this crap and say whatever it is. and you know, if I'm mean or not mean. So I open up the gym to the world. You get to see me at everything. You get to see me yelling. You get to see me throwing a ball, whatever it is, my, my hat. But you also get to see me coach. You also get to see me put the plays together during timeouts and, and, and actually teach the kids. And you, you get to see the love and the dancing and the music and all this stuff when we're dancing and acting stupid. You get to see what it really is about, um, which is just passion. I'm just very passionate. So I yell, I push, I do all this stuff because I'm passionate. That's, that's all it is and because I care. So for me, for people that are trying to imitate the stuff that we do, I don't really stress it or worry about it. I know people keep sending me all this stuff about about stuff like that. I don't worry it because you got to have a personality. You just have to have a personality to do what we do um, and, and do this. And you just can't fake it. I think that one of the reasons that, that this is, has worked for us is because I don't fake it. Nothing's fake. It's literally you're getting me at 100% the entire time, right? And, um, <clears throat> and that's all you get. I mean, I've been clowned for everything. I've been clowned for the crazy pants and stuff like that. I've done the crazy pants for the longest time. I think this weekend I was wearing a frog on my wrist plus these things. But the frog on my wrist, just holding onto my wrist. Um, and I'm sure people clown that or think I'm a clown for it or whatever. But to me, it's very simple. One of my players gifted me that. So I'm one of those people that like, when I get something gifted, I use it. I show that I care that, you know, I, I don't care what anybody else thinks. It's just one of my players gifted me that. So yes, it's gonna be a part of me. And um, these are constant stuff that I get given and I just wear it for that purpose. So I still got letters that players send me during COVID and stuff like that. I keep all that stuff. And I anything I get that I can wear, 
or take with me. I also do that because I'm grateful. Um, and it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks about it. So uh, that's one of the things. If you saw me with the frog, is one of my players gifted it to me. And, you know, I loved it. And I wanted to show that I loved it. And that's how I showed it. Um, so other than that, but I'm, I'm truly appreciative of this this platform and everything I've been able to, to do with it and, and all the posts and stuff. And look, when I post about refs back calls, where I post a player that touched the ball, that the ref didn't call and stuff like that, I want you to know that's not me blaming the player for not saying, hey, I touched it. Um, I don't expect the player to own up to, to touching the ball. That's me like talking to the ref about, hey, bro, <laughs> you should have seen that. Um, but I don't get mad that a player doesn't call their touch. Um, <laughs> come on, guys. Like, truly, when I was a player, you there's no way I was going to turn around and tell the ref, hey, I touched it. Like, no. Like, I, that didn't happen. And that's not something I ever got taught. Um, and for my players, if they get asked, you're either going to say something. But usually, it, I, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, I've had plays where it's in, out, whatever it is, and, and people say it or they admit it or don't admit it. I've admitted it before, I think. A coach asked me the other day, like I was sitting, we just played him Sunday, I wanna say, and a ball landed really close to in or whatever, and he looked at me, he was like, he was like, he did this sign, and I was like, oh, it was in. You know, like I looked at him and said, it was in. And, but they, it got called out. So, uh, it is what it is, I mean, just know that when I post it, it's not, don't be angry at the player or whatever, because it's, and truly they shouldn't, they shouldn't be looking at the ref and be like, yeah, I touched it, man. And doing their job for them. Like, that's just, it's not how it works. Uh, there are going to be some plays that I'm definitely posting on here about that the ref made that I'm not a fan of. Um, but it's okay. Refs make mistakes too. And it is what it is. I, I dealt with a really bad ref. I want to say well, first off, one of my other teams, I was sitting there, and the ref was horrible. Like, I mean, horrible. I mean, I got into it with one of the refs. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to try to lie. Because the setter was back row, came front row, jumped front row, pushed the ball down. Didn't call it. Did it twice. Twice. Didn't call it. And then he, he dares call our captain over and tell him, I was like, if he – Tools, tells my captain to tell me if you have an opinion you can tell some you can voice it to the down ref i was like it's not an opinion it's the rules <laughs> bro like it's the rules what are we talking about uh, and the double calls were non-existent this weekend i mean i think in open they called it a little bit but in the other brackets i saw in pools i saw there was like almost no calls on doubles and they were rough like it was bad um, and the, the ref I got at the end too, like he called, <laughs> he called stuff, he, he called stuff so bad. There was one game where there was like no double calls on these doubles that this girl was doing, but then he called me out on a double. And I think the, the parents lost it. I had to tell the parents to calm down because I don't like that. Like, I don't like that behavior from parents. I don't like that behavior from, from my players. Like I said before, like me, I'm the coach. If I want to yell, cool. I don't like my parents berating refs or anything like that. I, I don't approve of that. So he called Mia for a double. And I'm gonna show it on video when she, he called it. The ball is so clean, so clean. And he called a double. And he called a double. And then on the other side, you'll see a ball like just boom and just spinning out of control. Just, just you see the hands and everything. No call. And to me, like just by the conversation with that ref in general before the game, and how he was walking and stuff, he was just ready to get out of there. He didn't really care. So most of the calls he was making, he was just doing it to, to do it. There's no real intent in what he was trying to do. So fun times. Um, I hope that y'all enjoyed this vlog. <laughs> One of my many. Um, but truly, truly, I just wanted to say that I appreciate you guys. I appreciate your support. Um, and I really, like, God, trust me when I say I'm extremely humbled by it. And, and remember this, because I know this is what makes me laugh. It's like my personality, I can change my personality from here to here to here to here to here to here. 
I had control over it. So if I'm angry at my team and I'm yelling at my team, I can, like you saw, I can immediately stop and call a play. I can immediately change it up and give some loving to somebody and, and be like, hey, it's our, it just depends on what I'm feeling at the moment. So if I'm like mad at a game that just finished and somebody approaches me for a picture or says something like that, I'm not gonna snap somebody's head off or bite somebody's head off. Like there's many times where I just finished a bad game and somebody would come up and ask me for a picture. I was like, of course, like, why not? Yes. And, you know, because I'm humbled by that. It, it, they, they've done nothing wrong. I mean, it's just, it's humbling. So, you know, don't be afraid. Like, if you want a picture or anything like that, don't be afraid. Um, I'm never mad at that. I'm not going to be mad at that. Uh, the only thing I do ask, because <laughs> it happened in a game, I was sitting in the 17s game, um, and I wasn't coaching, granted, it was Sydney, but I was sitting on the bench, and this dad, like, pushed his daughter in front to the bench to come get a picture of me in front of the bench, like, it wasn't even behind to approach me, it came in front, and I was like, no, no, no I got you, I got you, and I just stepped back behind the bench for a second and took a picture. Just try your very best to wait till after the game or before the game. I'm around there, like, literally all day most of the time, okay? Uh, but I appreciate you guys, and I am very humble by this. So, hope you guys have a good week. Uh, we will be in Foley next weekend. My 15th is not going to be there. My 18th national won't be there. But I'm going to go support um, my other teams and my other players and my coaching staff. And um, the weekend after that will be in Dallas. The weekend after that I'll be in New Orleans. <sighs> oh, God, it's a long month. All right, guys. Deuces.